Okay, I'm just going to be upfront with you. I am not a fan of Meta, I don't like their business practices, and I don't like Facebook. But I also believe in giving credit where credit is due. And I can tell you, this MetaQuest 3 may be the best headset ever created dollar for dollar. Let's talk about it. Welcome everyone to Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. So this video is a follow-up to our MetaQuest 3 initial impressions, and I'm not going to go over a lot of the topics that I already talked about in that video. You can see it up here if you haven't watched it yet, but I'd encourage you to watch both so you get my full view of the new MetaQuest 3. So I said in the opening statement that this may be the best virtual reality headset ever made. That's a pretty bold statement. How can I say that? Well, the visuals certainly aren't as good as they are on the Pimax Crystal, which is $1,599 currently, or the Vario Aero, which is currently $990, but when it was released was about a $2,000 headset. So the simple fact that I'm even mentioning the Quest 3 when talking about those other headsets should tell you something. The pancake lenses in this headset are amazing. They basically give you a very similar visual experience to those high-end enthusiast level headsets. And that's really what makes this headset so amazing. We are allowing the average consumer now to be able to experience this visual fidelity that has only been accessible to the really expensive headsets in the past. And this little headset it does so many things and takes from so many pieces that just make this headset as a, as a whole an amazing thing. So for example, it's got the on-ear audio, which I love. So of the, you know, the G2 fame and the Pimax Crystal, you've got onboard audio, which you don't have on the Vario Aero. And the audio is pretty good. Talking about the volume, it's got an onboard volume control, which I love having. It's inside out tracking. And so you don't need base stations like you do for the Vario Aero or some of the other headsets out there. And the head tracking, the inside out tracking is really good. It's actually better than the inside out tracking that I found on the Crystal. This headset actually tracks amazingly well. Even when I got into low light situations, it still was tracking pretty well. The tracking for the controllers is good. I did notice that the track, the tracking on the controllers, if you left your hands down at your side, for an extended period of time, like if you're watching a cutscene in a game or something, it did tend to lose tracking if you didn't bring them back up and let it recatch. Um, so that was really the only time I lost any tracking was when I kind of kept my hands down at my side for too long. Other than that, the tracking's been pretty rock solid. The battery use on the controllers is amazing. I've probably got about, I'd say, 30 hours in this headset now, and these things are still running at about, I think they're at 50 and 60% of the uh, AA battery that it came with. So you're not going to run out of battery in these for a very long time. Talking about the battery, there is a little button here. So in the past, um, the battery doors have come off on some of the other Quest models. On this one, there's a little button that you actually push to release the door. So that's a nice little adjustment so that the door doesn't come off easily. So great job all around on the controllers and in general the tracking. The hand tracking is another feature from this, and I've talked about how much I've enjoyed the hand tracking, but with the depth sensor and the hand tracking, it's just so intuitive and so easy to use this headset, and that's what I love about it. Um, it's just a great experience. It's really easy to get into and use, so that's another big plus to this headset. The other side of this is the form factor. Because it uses those pancake lenses, it's thinner. It's still got the weight of the Quest 2, but it's thinner. So that weight close to your face, it feels more comfortable. And, you know, it's not the big screen beyond by any means, but it's certainly headed that direction. So it takes that ergonomic uh, element and adds it into this amazing headset. It's got something that no other consumer headset does very well, and that's the mixed reality component. Now, I'm not a big believer in mixed reality in general for gaming. I think it's going to be a little bit of a fad. But boy, it's an amazing introduction to um, VR and MR. 
I put a lot of people into that First Encounters little demo and everybody has loved it and they're just amazed at what something like this can do. So I think that's a really good introduction into this world of virtual reality and mixed reality. So I'm just thrilled with that. And for all you glasses wearers out there, like me, this thing will accommodate glasses. It's got an adjustable facial interface that you can actually pull out and it'll give you room for your glasses. So you can basically flop it on and put it on and you'll be all set. Now, I don't recommend wearing your glasses in a virtual reality headset. Take it from me, someone who's uh, scratched up the lenses on two virtual reality headsets. I think you're much better off to buy a set of prescription lenses, uh, for example, from Hans VR, who are one of our channel supporters. And uh, this is just a better way to go. It'll give you a better experience and you'll be sure not to damage the lenses in your VR headset. So it's just got a lot of the things that make all these other headsets so good and they're all put into this one little headset that's a reasonable price. The base model is only $499. And I'm actually really impressed that they can actually sell it for that cheap, considering all the technologies that's in here. So I've had some fun with this. Um, we were talking about mixed reality. So I want to share with you one of the really cool experiences that I found when it comes to mixed reality. So welcome to our real life living room, courtesy of the pass through cameras on the Quest 3. As you can see in real life, we actually have a 50 inch television sitting over in the corner, but we're going to give the living room a little bit of an upgrade courtesy of mixed reality. Now, if I sound a little different, it's because I'm using the Quest 3 microphone. So this is what the Quest 3 microphone sounds like. And uh, let's get on with our upgrade. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a little program called X Stadium. This is free in the Meta Store. And what it allows you to do is basically view, select broadcast, and select content on your Quest 3. And you'll see here once it pops up, we'll have a little menu in front of us that will uh, give us what we can watch. So you can see there's all kinds of sporting content that we can watch. Let's just go over here to NASCAR and we'll pick a race. Um, here we go. We'll start here and here comes the upgrade. So now look at that. We now have a giant screen pretty much taking up the whole back wall. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll just jump over. We'll get into some racing action here. So you can see what's going on here. So you can watch basically NASCAR pretty much filling up your entire room or your dorm or whatever. So isn't that cool? But there's one thing that's even neater. So let's go ahead and come back and go to the last race. So let's go over here to the last uh, race that just took place October 8th and watch this. So now you see we have all the camera views on this race so you've got eight additional camera views and let's go ahead and get into some racing action here let's see what happens here so if you look here you have multiple in-car views you have pit cameras you have all that and here's what else is cool so i'm going to stand up and we can walk over here so look at this the screen just kind of stays there and i can get up close and look at each of these screens um, there's the big screen right there. If I want to come over here, I can see all these screens. I can sit in this couch and watch from here if I, you know, if I really am interested. So this is a really cool implementation of mixed reality. And it's just one more thing that makes the Quest 3 such an amazing device. So as you can see, there's a lot of applications for mixed reality. And... With the pass-through cameras that this thing has, we'll talk about that. The pass-through cameras are situated here uh, in addition to the tracking cameras, which are on the outside, and we've got the depth sensor here. Now, this depth sensor adds to this experience as well. The actual implementation and using the Quest 3 is one of the easiest headsets I've ever used for setup. And this depth sensor allows you now, when you're setting up a room scale experience, you just look around the room and it sets up your boundaries for you. And that's just so much better than having to draw them out or map them or any of that stuff. So it's really easy to use. So again, it just makes this headset an amazing device. Um, in addition to that, 
the standalone titles for Quest are pretty extraordinary. The library that they have for the Quest 3 is definitely considered one of the best ecosystems out there. And I can tell you that this new chipset in here runs those standalone experiences quite well. And that's one of the best things about this. You know, all of our other high-end headsets, we have to have a pretty beefy computer system to run them. You know, for example, the the Arrow and the Crystal, I have a 4090 system with a, you know, AMD uh, 5900X uh, CPU. And, you know, they even struggle a little bit. Well, what's so cool about this is you don't even need a computer. You can run this in standalone, and the games are decent. Now, the Quest 2 titles that are, you know, from before and that are ported over to the Quest 3, they're along the graphical lines of somewhere between a PlayStation 2 and a PlayStation 3 right in there. So that kind of gives you an idea of the graphics uh, fidelity. But I went ahead and tried Red Matter 2, which is being lauded as the best standalone, uh, as far as graphics go, uh, for this headset. And I can tell you, it was on par with a lot of my PC VR experiences. Uh, the graphics were great, it ran fine, and I was really impressed. So this is capable of doing some pretty amazing things, even in standalone mode. So I'm very, very thrilled with that. Now let's talk a little bit about PC VR mode. Well, the PC VR mode just floored me. A lot of you may know, I actually have been using my old Vive Pro, and I use it wirelessly, and that's what I've been using for room scale up until this point. And it's just because I love the OLED screens and all of that. Well, I can tell you, even though this doesn't have OLED screens, this is an amazing experience, and what they can do wirelessly with this, it just floored me. So I tried various ways of connecting this to the PC. I did try the link cable, and I can tell you, stay away from that. The link cable option for this headset was terrible. There was so much artifacting, I couldn't believe it. I was dumbfounded because the cable should, in theory, give you the best connection to the headset that you can get. That is not the case. I don't think Meta has spent the time to upgrade the Oculus software, and so I think that's where the problem lies. Um, I even tried the AirLink software, and I tried it on both my computers, both my SIM computer and my room scale computer. I couldn't get it to work on either, and it said that there was no audio available when using it, so that was a problem. And then I paired it and did everything, but I could never get it to connect. It would just sit in the loading screen forever. And after a while, I finally decided, what's the point? Because the answer for using this in PC VR is virtual desktop. It's a uh, piece of software, and I've got it linked below, but it's a must-have if you're going to do any PC VR in the Quest 3. It allows you to hook to the Quest 3 through your network, and it allows you to adjust a lot of the parameters to make this a great experience. And it was just an amazing piece of software that I don't think any real Quest 3 user using it for PC VR can do without. So, highly recommended there. And uh, my PC VR games looked amazing. I saw compression just a little bit from time to time, but very, very rarely. And uh, I was just thrilled. It was far better, uh, the experience was far better than I expected out of this little headset. And I can tell you this, I bought my Pimax Crystal really for VR in room scale. That, that was the big reason I bought it because they're doing a wireless you know, module with it. Well, they've got quite a hill to climb because if they don't get close to what this can do, this may be my room scale option, even though I own that expensive headset. So we'll see what Pimax can do, but this thing does it so well. Pimax has got quite a bar to reach in order to replace this for room scale. I can tell you that right now. So, um, so that, that was kind of the fun stuff. I even think this headset is even good for simmers out there. So I flew in Microsoft Flight Sim quite a bit, and the quality's not quite there compared to the high-end headsets, but it's really close. And I thoroughly enjoyed all my flights, all my racing, everything I did in this headset on a sim level, it was fun. Now, let's start talking about some of the cons of this, because this obviously isn't perfect. And one of the big cons is the battery life. So this headset without any supplemental power will go about two hours. It depends on how bright you have the screen set, how loud you have the volume, what kind of experience you're doing. Is it mixed reality? Is it VR? 
but it'll give you roughly about two hours with the built-in battery. So if you're planning on doing anything more than that, which I certainly will, you're going to need some kind of supplemental battery for this headset. So I chose the Bidbok. Um, I've got a review of it. I'll throw that up here. Uh, this is the one that I chose, and it's working extremely well. So that's something you can look at doing, some sort of supplemental battery. The other thing I tried, actually, was I used the link cable. So when I used the link cable and had the visuals running through it, which, again, was terrible, what that link cable did from a charging standpoint is it uh, knocked the battery drain about in half. So I got about four hours worth of usage having it plugged into a uh, Type-C USB port on the back of the computer. This thing went about four hours before it went dead. But what I determined was because the link cable was such a bad interface to the PC VR realm, I plugged my link cable just to test it into the actual adapter, the wall adapter that came with the Quest 3. So I just plugged my link cable directly into this, into the power socket on the wall, and it ran like a champ. It still drained slowly, but after three hours in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it went from 100% to 90%. So if you do the math, if you use this along with the cable, this plugged in the wall, you should get about 30 hours worth of use out of that. And I think that's totally uh, acceptable. I don't know a lot of users that are going to be running this for uh, 30 hours. So um, I was quite happy with that. So I think from a SIM standpoint, the battery usage was my big concern with this. And the fact that you can overcome that with supplemental battery power, either external battery packs or by plugging it into the wall adapter, um, that's not really an issue that I'm concerned with anymore. And that's really was the big stumbling block. So some of the other cons uh, that I found with this were uh, we had a lot of screen glare. So the nature of pancake lenses, you get a lot of the reflections of the light bouncing between the two lenses, and you just get glare because of that lens design. And I don't know that there's anything you can overcome that with. It's just inherent to that. That's what makes the aspheric lenses of the crystal and the arrow better in that regard. You don't get that uh, glare. And I'll show you here kind of what that looks like. But it's prevalent. It's only prevalent in really contrasty scenes. So it has to be a really dark background with a really bright uh, foreground. But you do get some of that. And I pretty much saw it whenever I was in a high contrast scene. Um, another con, the screens are, are not OLED. Um, they don't have local dimming. So they're just an LCD screen. But with the brightness control, you can actually get the experience pretty good in this. I did some Elite Dangerous. And yeah, it wasn't black blacks. But it was still pretty good uh, once I adjusted the brightness to where I liked it. So uh, I would say that's another one. I don't know why Meta hates so much total immersion, but this thing has light bleed in it too. You can see light coming in through the nose. It's not bad, but there's definitely light bleed, which breaks your immersion coming up through the nose. Now, I think that's probably going to be taken care of with uh, aftermarket, probably VR cover will come out with something just like they did with the Quest 2. But for some reason, Meta just doesn't like isolating all the light out of the headset. Now, the, uh, the stock head strap is okay. You can use it. But knowing that you need more battery power, um, that was the reason I changed it. But if, if you're okay, you know, just playing for a little bit, it is usable. It's not great, but it is usable. The facial interface, I don't have a problem with. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have found it uncomfortable. For me, the facial interface has been fine. It hasn't bothered me at all. Uh, in addition to that, there is some screen door effect in this, um, but it's not bad. It's You have to look for it. In fact, there's a lot of reviewers that aren't even seeing the screen door effect. So if that's not something you're real susceptible to seeing, you may not even notice it. But it definitely is there. Um, one of the other big problems with this is the built-in microphone. As you heard on the uh, mixed reality demo that I showed you earlier, the microphone is not that good in this. For whatever reason, uh, they changed it out from the Quest 2, which we had a pretty good microphone. This microphone is not great. It picks up a lot of the plosives and a lot of those issues, as you heard. So I'd say the microphone isn't a, isn't a perfect deal as well. But, um, you know, overall, those are really the big cons. Now, we also have to talk about the fact it doesn't have eye tracking um, but really, 
at a unit, the base model being $499, I don't think you can expect eye tracking. And to be honest, even without eye tracking, again, my Sims ran pretty good. Now, again, I did, do have a 4090 and a pretty beefy computer. But what that tells you is your limitation isn't going to be in this headset. Your limitation is going to be in your other components and your other um, computer parts. So if you have a good router, mine's a Wi-Fi uh, about 5, and it does the wireless good. If you have a decent computer, this headset will not only be able to do room scale, um, it'll be able to do Sims, and obviously it'll be able to do your standalone. So... All those things combined are why I say this headset may be the best VR headset that's ever been made. And again, I've got to give credit to Meta. They have built a piece of uh, equipment here that to me is second, in, second to none for what you pay for it. So that's my overall review. Again, I appreciate you all watching. Um, if you find this review helpful or you know particularly informative, I'd love for you to hit that super thanks button down there. Any donations to the channel obviously help us out and allow us to keep making content like this. So that's what I have for you today. Until next time, I appreciate you guys watching. And remember to get your game on.